Hey, it's Mike. I'm back. Yeah, I'm going to continue along while I have the time. Uh, using extended modeling techniques uh, for basic walls. Modifying wall profiles. Oh, excuse me. An important extended modeling technique for walls is the ability to customize the elevation profile of a wall segment. There are two ways you can accomplish this. By attaching the wall's top or base to another element, or by editing the sketch profile of a wall. You can apply these methods to basic walls, stacked walls, and curtain walls. To attach a wall to another element, select the wall segment, and you will see the attach top slash base button in the contextual modify tab. Once the command is activated, select either top or base, and then pick an object. Walls can be attached to roofs, ceilings, floors, reference planes, and even other walls. Now they have a figure here that shows a stack wall that has been attached to a curved linear roof by extrusion, and we've done this back in chapter seven, roof by face. So we'll just get this first one done and take a look at this. And you remember, there was this curved, uh, curved surface that we created in the template. And what we were going to do was create some walls and make sure that they, uh, when they were generated and they were attached to the roof, that they would automatically be cut to the contour of the roof. Now, if we remember, um, if we go down to, let's say, level, go to level three, and we drew some walls, And we don't have to get perfect because we're just trying to demonstrate how to attach a wall to the first of many things we can attach a, a wall to. Well, there's the wall. And if we look at it again in 3D, we can see that it's on, it's on level three. But you can see the roof. Uh, doesn't have a, a level associated with it. So, as you see, when you select a roof, you can see that there's a top, a, a to, attach top, bottom, and there's detach. So it's it's actually as simple as just attaching selected roof to model elements, such as roofs or floors. On the options bar, select top or base to indicate which part of the wall to attach. Well, you don't necessarily have to because it is constrained to level three. So if you do select the wall, uh, if being that it's constrained, uh, you, uh, you may not have to specify top or bottom. So just uh, know that you could actually just select the roof. And as you can see, that front wall conforms to the contour of the roof. And it goes for all the other ones here. If I was to uh, actually hit tab and grab the whole wall, I could actually do it as a uh, as one complete sweep. And it will have attached itself to the underside of that roof. Um, it's a little dark on that side, so let's go over to this side. But as you can see, it's attached. Now, I'm not going to spend too much time on that because we talked about that in Chapter 7, and, and we're going to be continuing along with more and more advanced modeling techniques building on top of everything that we're doing. But walls can be attached in various different methods, and we could attach them to roofs, ceilings, floors, reference planes, and even other walls. Now, I have this um, level 1 drawn. You look at it from a camera perspective. I've got a floor up here. We've already demonstrated the roof. I got a floor up here. I got a ceiling. And I got I got some walls around on sitting on top of a pad. Now, let me close this. So I can have my views. And that's it from looking at the west elevation. Now it said there are two ways to accomplish this by attaching the walls top or base to another element or by editing the sketch profile of the wall. We're not going to get into that because that's two different things. Well, here's the wall. It allows to attach top base. You see, in this instance, I could say, well, you know what? Bring the base. Would, that would be higher than the top.
top. So I could say take the top and attach it to the ceiling. I could take then the attach the top base in the options bar select base. And if I could select it, I could keep it attached to there if I had an intermediate level. If I had an intermediate level um, here, I could attach it up to that as well. If I was to attach the top to uh, this floor, get it again, attach the top. to level two, hold on. Am I grabbing the right wall? So I'll do that for a second. I didn't detach it. That's the thing. I would have to detach, select the wall, attach, and then it goes back to the ceiling or the, or the floor. So that's the, uh, the long and short of that. And if we were to draw a reference plane anywhere in here, we could, have, we could uh, of course, uh, attach it to uh, reference planes as well. So again, I'll select the wall, I'll detach it, I'll select it again, I'll attach it, and I'll select the reference plane. Oops, I didn't detach it. Let's see if I can get it there. No, I can't, it's uh, top constraint, up to level two, unconnected, apply, detach, detach all, Grab it again, attach top base. There, right to the reference plane. So as you can see, um, there are lots of different ways that you can manipulate your wall. Now this part, you're gonna find really, really cool. Let's, uh, let's take a look at this wall now, in this view, and let's just uh, read on for a second. When you would use the attach method, be mindful of how the software treats walls that are attached to other objects. After you use this method, the instance parameter, parameters top is attached and base is attached, will show the status of the selected wall's attachment. These are read-only parameters and are for information only. Be aware that the top constraint and any other offset or height value will not display the actual height of the wall when it is attached to something. For example, if the wall whose base constraint is level one, and top constraint is level four, is attached to a floor slab on level two, the wall's top constraint will still be level four in the properties palette. This variance does not affect other calculations, just wall length, area, and volume. Well, that's good, because if we look at this in, in uh, elevation, its base constraint is level one. Well, in this instance, let's just, un let's just attach it for a second and, ex and explain, or see if I can explain what that means. Well, Here's level two, and uh, top constraint is, let's put it on level two, it apply. Oops, can grab the wall again. Unconnected connected height, 10 feet, right? Base is attached, base extension distance. Just make notes of these uh, constraints. Now when I attach it to this wall, it's, stop, it's top constraint is still up to level two, but it's not gonna affect the, uh, the volume length or area. And that's good. Automatically attaching walls to floors. When you create a standard floor by sketching a boundary, the floor is hosted on a specific level. After you complete the boundary sketch and finish the editing mode, Revit offers you some help to attach walls to the, to the floor. Any wall whose top constraint is the level on which the floor is hosted can be automatically attached to the bottom of the floor. As a bonus, you can 
access this function at any time, not just when you create a floor. If you forgot to attach the walls to a floor when you first modeled the floor, simply select the floor and then click Edit Boundary. Click the Finish Edit Mode button, you should be prompted to attach walls to a floor. Well, if I was to select the floor, Edit Boundary, now say OK, and hit OK, they were already attached, so that's, that's a good thing. Close to select this floor and a boundary. Finish. Would you like the walls that go up to this floor's level to attach to its bottom? Now watch what I do. What happens when I do it? Attach. Boom. And that's exactly what it said. It gives you that uh, as a bonus. It gives you that option. Now this other method is really cool. The other method of modifying wall profiles is to edit the sketch profile of the wall. To do this, select the wall and then click the Edit Profile button in the Contextual Modify tab. This will open a sketch mode in which you can draw a new boundary for any edge of the wall shape as shown in Figure 13.29. Click Finish Edit Mode to complete this operation. Now, there's a lot of things you could do with this. So let's go to that west elevation. And we see here we have our reveals, we have our bull nose. Uh, we can put some coping on this one, put some coping on, on the other ones. But let's just, we're going to be focusing on, actually there is a, a, that's the floor. We're going to be focusing on this wall right here. Let's go to the west elevation and select the wall. And you see edit profile within the context of selecting it. Uh, you have edit profile. Changes the shape of the selected wall or opening. Now, Revit removes the top and bottom attachments prior to editing the profile of the wall. That's fine. So now, what do we have here? Well, we have this pink line that is the d definition of the profile of the wall when we drew it. Uh, but you can't get these really cool shapes right, right out of a, a linear wall. You have to create them yourself. So what is this profile made up of? Well, it's made up of four magenta uh, line segments. Well, we could drag it. Well, they're locked and they're constrained. But we could drag this one down to affect the profile. And if I hit OK, yeah, no, no, I know. Can't keep the target joined. Unjoin it. And if we look at this camera, well, I accomplished that, and that's really not too fantastic, right? But what else could we do with our drafting prowess? Well, we edit the profile again. Now, there's absolutely no reason why you can make this profile anything you want, as long as it's structurally feasible. I mean, I could delete this line. I can delete that line entirely. I can pick on this one and say, you know what? I'm going to drag it down a little bit. Maybe I'll drag it down halfway. And then I could create maybe a spline or another box or another line segment. Maybe I could do a sawtooth shape. Some funky shape. And then maybe I could change to a, a spline or a French curve. Maybe I could zoom in and get a little a little fancy. Let me curve up. Let me curve around. Now, as long as the, the it forms a closed boundary loop, as long as it clo uh, forms a closed boundary loop, there's absolutely no reason why you can't create any wall shape you want. And it will still host, it'll still, as long as you don't screw up the, uh, if you don't bring the uh, wall buck and wall frame too far where it can't be framed out. But any shape you can imagine, uh, these, uh, these tradesmen are highly skilled. Craftsmen, they're highly skilled. So that's one way of editing the profile. And that's not the most beautiful profile, but you get to the point. You have carte blanche to edit your palette any way you want. And this works for floors and roofs as well. But now I want to show you something else. So just a quick, uh, a quick example here. I'm just going to delete out this. Uh, actually, I like it too much to delete it. I'm going to do it on this side. And I'm going to open up, uh, well, I don't need to open up the east elevation. We can look at this in uh, 3D view. Now, One of the uh, other uh, aspects of this, and we went over this uh, in our uh, massing 
conceptualization of that chapter. Excuse me. If you are working on traditional architecture, restoration of historic buildings or freeform design, you may need to create walls that are irregular in shape. The model in place tool found in the component dropdown list on the architectural tab lets you create any wall style independent of the constraints of the layer structure described in the previous sections of this chapter. Figure 13.30 shows an example of such wall created with the solid geometry tools also found in the family editor. You can refer to chapter 15, or we're gonna. Designing with the family editor, explore the various modeling techniques available in the model in place mode. Remember that the selection of the family category is important to the behavior of the custom geometry. We're gonna get into that. Select the walls category to allow your custom elements to be scheduled with other with uh, with other walls and to place hosted elements such as doors and windows. Now, um, these families maybe ed need to be edited when I'm done to get this to be just perfect. But I'm gonna go through this demonstration to get a good idea of what I'm trying to convey to you. So again, in the architectural tab under the build panel, under component model in place, you'll notice that we could pretty much create an in-place family to a certain extent. Uh, but we're not gonna get too into it because we have, uh, there's other things we could do within the family editor interface that we can't do in the modeling in place editor. And uh, we touched on that. Now, we'll just call it walls one. Now again, boom, at our fingertips, the palette changes to a more of a modeling family editor type uh, interface. Uh, as you can see, um, where we have Forms, model control, connectors, datum, work plane, in place editor. So let's create a blend. And if you remember what blend does, it creates a 3D, a solid 3D shape that changes along its length, blending from a starting shape to an ending shape. This tool blends two profiles, for example. If you sketch a hexagon and a circle above it, a solid 3D shape is created that blends the two sketches together. Now, we could do that with walls. Um, and, and it's not too difficult to do. So if I was just to create a model line, and create a small a little rectangle over here. Now notice, oops, I didn't do it right. Hold on, cancel, cancel, cancel. I didn't do it right. We're gonna create a, uh, cancel. I already knew I screwed it up. A wall, follow along, walls one. Now, a blend. Right. Now, if you look, we're going to edit top, mode, draw, work plane. Well, edit top means that if we click it, we're going to be changing to the top of a solid blend, which must mean we're at the bottom. So we're at the bottom of the base of the wall. Now I'm just going to draw a triangle, a thick triangle, up to that wall. And then within the context of doing that, I'm going to hit the edit top. I'm going to draw another rectangle right there. And I'm going to get fancy. I'm going to grab this modify button. I'm going to grab this edge of the top rectangle. I'm going to delete it. I really shouldn't get, be getting fancy, but I want to. I'm going to grab this spline tool. And I'm just going to draw an irregular surface. An irregular surface for the top blend. If I can't express my creativity, then I have a hard time getting through the day. So let's just get this to some uneven form because, again, thinking outside of the cubicle is tantamount. Well, I think it works. Let's take a look. Well, that's the other side of it. If we take a look at the 3D view, that's that side of it. Well, again, it created it, but if you notice, it didn't bring it all the way up. But if we look at this from this view, I can get it to the bottom of this little bit by gripping it. But again, this isn't, um, it doesn't have all the parameters built into the, the system fa wall families. If you look, we can only give it a function. We have no layers. I could say it's exterior, and that's great, but we can't give it a function. Uh, we can give it a function, we can't give it any layers yet because we haven't assigned those parameters to it. We could give a fire rating of two hour if we want, and we apply that. There's some parameters built into it. And again, the shape is kind of cool. 
It's a little irregular. It's uh, it's not your normal wall, and it can host doors. It can host doors, but again, we may have to modify the door because again, look at the framing, and it can host windows. The framing will be what decides whether or not, you know, we'll, we'll be able to uh, to have to modify the family of the window. As you see, I'm just going to delete this wall for clarity purposes. And you can see it's, it's recessed in there, as is the window, and it'll cut the geometry because uh, it's a hosting element. Now, one thing we can do, and just why we're uh, while we're looking at this, is we can edit the uh, this type for its material and do a few things. Well, we can make it brick, right? If we wanted to, we can make it brick. We can make it uh, steel, chrome, plywood sheathing, earth. Um, and these are some of the. Um, we can make it soldier chorus brick, asphalt shingle, concrete masonry unit. And but I'm, I'm going to take it a step further here. Well, here's the uh, the pattern here and the appearance. And we can hit apply. Now, again, it's not very aesthetically pleasing, but we could modify the materials to make it any material we want. Now, let me show you another tool. If I could, if I remember where to find it. We can override the graphical elements uh, of this. That's one way we can do it. Uh, but in the materials browser, again, like I should have never left it with this concrete masonry. Hold on, let me get the right ellipsis right here. Now, let me take it one step further. If I go to image and we look at this concrete masonry units and I actually double click on the image itself of the concrete image, you'll notice it's a portable network graphic, a PNG. Your, your camera can take pictures of, uh, of anything and it'll come out in PNG. And you'll see the pattern, three foot one by three foot, uh, three foot 11 by three foot 10. Now, this affects how you, uh, you see it based on uh, its, its pixel size. But there's absolutely no reason why I couldn't create a new material and change the source pattern to anything I want, any uh, splotch I want, field stone, field stone, all of these finishes you have at your fingertips in your library. If we take a look at some of these split surface concrete block, these finishes, you'll find we could put a, a, a bunch of beautiful textures on this particular face of this um, wall. Well, let's just hold that thought because I want to get it. Um, let's see here, there's so many to pick from. Where do you pick? Well, all this masonry, travertine, all of this, it's unfinished. There's just so many patterns. You know, I, this is sort of the way this particular building I'm in, this ash, limestone ashlock course, course. I can put that in there. And let's see if, um, if the resolution will, will show through for us. Now granted, it still thinks it's a concrete masonry unit. And I didn't get it to, uh, I didn't get it to work. And now I'm, I'm feeling, I'm feeling uh, like I let you down. Concrete masonry unit appearance. Wait, is it I use it use render appearance? This may do it. Let me ray trace it for a second and see if uh, it, it inherits the, the material. No, it didn't, and I'm upset about that. Give me a second. I will get it to work, and I'll explain the uh, what my foul up. Behind it. Now, it could be that. Let me um, let me try. I did this before. Not the texture alignment. 
I know I gauge this. And I had okay. Use appearance. I'm showing through description. Type. Concrete masonry unit. I had changed all of these. And you can see in the preview, it is showing it as such. Now, this is just a caveat. It, it carries over all of its physical properties and its thermal properties, as you can see, for any of you propeller heads. Uh, it, it sure is um, programmed in with the, uh, the thermal dynamics, thermodynamics, and all the physical properties of what um, this physical material is going to provide. But I can't get it to look the way I want. So that being said, I uh, call it right. I had this set right before, and now I can't get it. And um, it now appears that concrete masonry, concrete masonry units has uh, acquired that pattern, but I don't see it. Concrete masonry. Let me see if I was able to uh, get it now. Let me see if uh, it's if it's parameters not allowing me to do that. So what I could do in the interim is apply the material itself. Let's see if I can apply it itself with the paint tool. It's already applied. It could be. No, it's not. It's taking the cinder block parameter or surface image and using that. And there's a small a little error there. With a newer version. Ah, uh, well, I don't know if that's going to help. But failure is not an option. Failure is not an option. So let's try a let's try a surface and create a new surface. How about we do that? Analytical surface. Duplicate. Let's give it a uh, an appearance image. To the exact one that I wanted, because I like that look, and that's the way it looks here at uh, on Andrew Street. If I can get down here, and these are all the split face uh, looks, which are really nice too. There's some uh, pond stone, but that's more for flooring. Some field stone. A lot of marble. And here's that masonry again, but these are more wall power floor patterns. This is more along the lines of it. Limestone rubble, masonry lines. This is the pattern I like. That's the pattern. So let me apply it to this new surface that I created. Graphics. I'm, I'm gonna leave this box not checked for a second. I'm just going to hit a apply, and I didn't get it. Let me see if it's um, realistic. No. Let me go back and use the render. Now, up here, when I put on realistic, I got it for the floor. I didn't get it for this wall. I didn't get it for this wall. Now, if I paint the wall, it, it could be because of the parameter. We didn't set the parameters in this wall. But I could have sworn I got it by painting it last time. Now, where is that analytical surface that is created? Well, there's concrete masonry units again. Now, that works for uh, the wall with the parameters on it, but it doesn't work for my wall because it doesn't have a material parameter, but I'm able to set the material parameter. So there is, in, therein lies a little bit of a conundrum. Almost as if uh, I'm not able to override it by painting it. But as you can see, you have carte blanche. You have carte blanche to change these materials by 
painting them and, and also changing the material parameters to a certain extent. And you get a better idea of uh, how to uh, create your own patterns. And that was what I was trying to uh, convey. And I, I was uh, one out of two. So it, it's got to be a parameter built into this wall that I'm not able to manipulate right now. So I'm not going to kill myself over it. I will obviously investigate it down the road and maybe I can uh, continue on with this wall um, in place family that I missed. Um, and again, uh, I think it lies in a, in a, in a, in a parameter, uh, possibly a global parameter and not a, um, a shared parameter. Maybe it's the instance of that wall that is uh, holding this up. So I have a few avenues I can just, I can, I can take a look at. But uh, again, just so you know, you, you can indeed um, create your own materials utilizing your own camera. Utilizing your own camera. And, and you can take a picture of anything. And it'll come in, like I said, as a PM, portable network graphic. So I threw in a whole bunch of information there. We're going to be getting into um, designing with the family editor anyway and all the materials down the road. That's a little early on to be getting into that. It's not part of this uh, chapter. But stacked walls is coming up next. And um, that's going to be a certification objective. But we've already kind of looked at it already from the layering perspective on the, uh, the wall edit assembly dialogue. So you'll find that you'll pick it up real quick, just like um, you will pick up other software platforms after you get through this one. Um, once you can learn to navigate around some of these platforms, you'll get better at other ones because they're, they're all kind of intuitive in the same intuitive fashion. They're all using the view cube. They're all, it's all based on the right hand rule. And it's also like a camera. So all the uh, rules still apply. So hopefully that tutorial was helpful to you. I have got things to do before we get into stacked walls. Hopefully the deck isn't stacked against you. <laughs>